Well, we're sitting here today in the Emerald Isle Motel with Ed McCauley. And I'm, I'm Seamus Norgard. I work for the Beaver Island Historical Society. And it's July 3rd, 2009. And Ed, you, you came here to um, march in the parade, 4th of July parade, right? Yes, that and I'm doing some repair work on the Bob S. boat that the Historical Society has. Well, wonderful. Just to kind of get you in the family, your relations to Beaver Island, now you're a relative of um, Black Pete um, McCauley? Yes, I'm a great-grandson. Great-grandson, okay. Um, anything you know about him or or not that much? Or? No, uh, I didn't really know anything about him until five years ago that I came to the island and saw the picture down at the museum and inquired around and then through Rod Nackerman, which is my cousin, a distant cousin, uh, I found out that yes, we were related. That was my great-grandfather and it's also Rod's great-grandfather. Okay. We, we've got interviews going with Rod too, so we got your two cousins here. Okay. Tell me a little bit about your grandfather, Ed McCauley. Well, there again, I don't know too much about him because he drowned here in uh, the bay in 19 and 12. So that was long before I was born. I have no knowledge of him other than the fact that, yes, he drowned. Well, he went through the dock. I have found in the latter years that he went through the dock, and when they found him the next morning, he was clutched to a piling, froze to death. Oh, so boy. he would have actually died of hypothermia, I presume, rather than drowning. Now, is he the the man who f lived on High Island? Yes, he was. Yeah, and, he yeah. had the family over on High Island. And there was six or seven children. Mm. And, uh, so part of the story is that that night, when they came over and informed the widow that he was passed, he was gone. She related the story that his side of the bed was wet. It's kind of a ghostly story in a sense. Oh, and there was, uh, it was like, I don't know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. There is no explanation as far as I'm concerned. No. But that's a tidbit that comes in there of um, what took place. Now, uh, where did you hear that about that? Uh, here on the island. Well, no, I heard that from my dad from years back. Okay, so there is... And there was also something about goat tracks on the beach. There was no goats around. Oh, boy. So there was kind of, I don't know whether it comes into the Irish part of it or what, but there was some kind of spooky situations there. And that was how long after he died? Do you know that? That was the night of the, the night of the happening. The night it happened. Her bed, his side of the bed was wet. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh boy. Um. He was a fisherman. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, he was fishing. The name of his boat was the. Uh, I'll think of it. Okay. Uh, I'll come up with. We'll it. come back to that. Do you know if he was born on Beaver Island or High Island? Uh, he was born here on Beaver Island. On Beaver Island. See, uh, Black Pete homesteaded out here on the south end. I say the south end, that end. Mm -hmm. That end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, uh, down at Macaulay Bay, that was named for Black Pete. Uh, other than that, I don't. And I've only got that information since I was here. There's several Macaulay, Macaulay Road, Macaulay Bay, Macaulay Point, uh, such as this. But there was two families of Macaulays here. There's Black Pete side, and then this other. The, they call it the brothers side. There was five brothers. Yes. 
And I think they all came off of uh, Aramore Island, Donegal County, Ireland. Did Black Pete come from Aramore too? Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're probably distant related at least. Well, it's <laughs> I want to think they were related, but there was a family feud like Kentucky. Mm -hmm. You stay over there, we'll stay here. We don't claim you, you don't claim us. You know, I don't know. Yes. It's it's all in the shadows back there someplace. Yes. So. Uh, now you did know your grandfather, though. No, you, no he, he drowned in 1912. I wasn't born until 31. Okay. Um, so the stories you've got about him and live life on High Island came through your dad then? Yeah. What? Can you share some of those stories about high, life on High Island? And Not really, because I can tell you, I can tell the world, Dad was a very horrible alcoholic. Mm -hmm. We, he allowed us to be raised and lived in dire destitute, uh, dysfunctional home. Mother took care of us the best she could. Uh, Dad was always off someplace in lumber camp, come home drunk. So we wasn't really a close family. I have the world of respect for him, my own self to him, because of the depression, of the times that it was and so on, it was tough. So we basically lived out of the woods, shoot deer, coon, pork pine, rabbit, partridge, whatever. Mother would can, she'd can anything that she'd get her hands on. Mason, don't forget the mason jar. And don't break one. So, uh, yeah, mother would can like a hundred quarts of applesauce. I remember one winter, that's all we ate were pancakes and applesauce. Wow. And now th this was over on the mainland, right? Yes, that was over at Wildwood. Wildwood, okay. Now, is this the Wildwood that's up near Petoskey, yep. what, east of Petoskey? Yep, mm -hmm. just uh, south of uh, south and west of Indian River. Okay. Right out in the middle of no place. Okay. Before we get further with that story, which I really want to wanna get to, um, you did relate the other day a little bit about that um, your grandfather knew the 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 House of David House, folks, House of David. and you had some interesting stories. Was they come from your mom or dad? Uh, they would have came from dad. Dad, Can, do you talk a little bit about those House of David folk and what? Well, the what only thing I know, let me clarify that it is hearsay. Okay. Because I wasn't there. But okay. The hearsay is that they were a ball club that had formed or through the group that called themselves the House of David, which I think was a cult-type group. And uh, don't let the world quote me, but anyway, mm -hmm. uh, they uh, formed this ball club, which was sort of like the Harlem Globetrotters. They were just spectacular on the field, they could beat any club out there. Are you talking about baseball, though? Baseball, yep. Okay. Uh -huh. Only they would stand there and guy would get all ready to sling the ball to the batter and he would bring back like this and he'd just bring right back over his shoulder, not looking. He knew where it was going. Boom! And throw that ball to second base or third base, wherever. And just, they was just spectacular of doing these little tricks. amazing tricks to uh, and People didn't know what was happening. Now that's the story I have. Okay. And uh, they went off of High Island to where is it? Garden or no, no, down, right down near Chicago. Oh. Okay, west or east of Chicago, come up around uh, Benton Harbor. Benton Harbor. Is that yes. Benton Harbor yes. down there? Yes. Okay, they went down to Benton Harbor. That's where they settled in down there. Okay. Now that's that's my side of it. Sure. But uh, do you know anything about um, 
Anything more about that you heard about them? Or? No, other than they were just a comical group. Hmm. And it was in that time of, uh, like when the Mormons were here on the island, uh, they were out there, whether they were part of them, a splendor of them or not. I don't know what this, what the uh, House of David people were, but they were a religious type gathering. Mm -hmm. I don't really like to use the word cult because they may not have been a cult, mm -hmm. but they were a gathering of people that was different. Now, did you hear anything about your grandfather's fishing at all? Any stories about that? No, other than the fact that Dad had, Dad had fished when, see, Dad was born in 1900. Okay. So Dad would have been 12 years old when, when his dad died here. And was your dad's also named Ed? No, no. his name was Ural. Ural. U-R-I-E-L. U-R-I-E-L. Where it comes from, I have no idea. And that's my middle name. Okay. So I'm named after my grandfather, my dad. And what's what's your mom's name then? Was May Bell Williamson was her maiden name. May Bell Williamson. Where was she from? Uh, Bel Air. Bel Air. Okay. Which is just down here below Charlotte or someplace. And was your old born on where there again, it? there's controversy there. Not controversy, but lack of knowledge. I think he was born in Newbury. Okay. Uh, Luce County. Okay. Uh, through his death records and so on. Uh, it seems to me that uh, it shows up he was born in Newbury. What brought him to Beaver Island? And, and when, do you think? Uh, well... Grandpa was his commercial fishing, and he brought the family over and settled them on High Island. Okay. And then he fished out of the port here at St. James. And, uh, like I say, my knowledge of my family's past is almost nil mm -hmm. because of the situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, your dad never brought you over to Beaver Island then? Did Matter of fact, my dad never even took me to my grandmother, which remarried from here. She left the island then and went over to Sac Bay. Oh. And, uh, Do you know her name? Uh, her, yes, her name was Mary. Mary, but it was Ben McCauley, but over there it was Green. Okay. We only knew her as Grandma Green. I met her one time in uh, my uncle, my dad's brother, who was in World War II, was getting ready to go to Europe. And uh, so he came home, and they came down to Wild, where we lived in Wildwood. And uh, Grandma came down with him. But Dad would take me up to Newbury and out to Sini, different places, out to lumber camps and so on that he could get me into and uh, we was right there that close to uh, garden the garden peninsula we never did go over to see grandmother because of his alcoholism and her husband my step granddad was colon green it was a very let's well, say a successful northern michigan farmer Mm -hmm. uh, had his cows and had his farm and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would tolerate drinking, no way. Mm -hmm. So Dad just shunned him forever. And mm -hmm. that's the way it ended up. So family ties with me is... Yeah. So. Well, as a young boy, um, when he took you into those, your dad took you into those lumber camps, that must have been interesting. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's part of my philosophy today. Stay out of the way and keep your mouth shut. How, how'd you get that philosophy? Just, just grew up with it. And I think it was part of my dad's teaching to me. Now just don't say nothing, just, just keep quiet. Just don't, you know. And uh, it's been part of my personality, I think, to be observing. 
to set back, like set the corner here and see see what's going on. Mm -hmm. See the man coming in there. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Keep so, your eyes open on the water. And it goes along also with Marine Corps training. Mm -hmm. So be alert. So, do you remember much about those logging camps? Oh yeah, uh, lots of stories come out of them, uh, and probably one of the most interesting is like we were just talking about, keep quiet in the dining room. When you go in there and sit down, you keep your mouth shut, and they would sit there, and uh, if they wanted the bacon or if they wanted the hash brown potatoes or pancakes, whatever. They pointed at them. They didn't say nothing. They didn't. Somebody that could, that could reach them and pass them. There was no talking at that table at all. Why do you think that was that nobody talked? The cook had control of everything. There was no BS. There was, in other words, come in here, eat your meal, get up, get out. Mm -hmm. I've got work to do. I've got to clean this up. I've got to get ready for the next meal. Mm -hmm. And. Oh, it was, the cook was a, was the supreme leader in that whole situation because that, like anything, your stomach is what carries you. Mm -hmm. And uh, those loggers, they, and they cooked. I mean, they had the best there was. What what kind of food was that oh, standard meal? Meat, or? meat and potatoes, mm -hmm. gravy, a basic, good hard basic. There was none of this frills. Uh, good hard 